Well, we'll start with the biggest storyline in uh, in um, during co- uh, conference championship week for you guys. You want me to go first? Yeah, please. My biggest storyline is the Blue Bloods becoming Cinderella's. We have eight yeah. seed Michigan State has a chance to make a run. We have North Carolina as a seven seed with a chance to make a run. We have the the one thing that I want more than anything else this week, and which may be like the right. single best storyline if it happens, is Kentucky making a run and winning the SEC tournament title game. That's what yeah. that's all I want in this in, in, in this world. I can it'll be so great. You know how John Calipari always has his rant ready to go about why they were screwed in the seating process. I cannot wait for Kentucky to go win the SEC tournament title, right? Get seated as like a 14, and for John Calipari to just rip the committee for seating the 14. Seed. Oh, that's all I want. Look at our world. record. Look at our record. How can you put us as a 14 seed? Yeah, he'll, we played the toughest schedule in the country. I, I can't believe yeah. I made this schedule, right. and you put us as a 14 seed. We played Richmond and Notre Dame. Like, <laughs> uh, just in case you didn't realize, like they both didn't make the tournament. So stop saying how tough your schedule was. Oh Skip. man, yeah, I can't. I, I, that's all I want. So that's my that's my biggest storyline. Adam, why don't you go next? Yeah, I mean, I think I've got two of them. I think one of them is you know which of these bubble teams are going to step up. I think that, you know, we obviously Syracuse, they're always on the bubble. So obviously I have to put my Syracuse hat on, at least for the rest of the conversation, um, and hope that they can win a couple games here and make things. You got all the gear ready to go. I love it. You came prep with all the props. As I told Jeff yesterday, I had my Belmont shirt ready. (laughs) Throw that out. Throw that out. Uh, I'll save that for the NIT. But, um, you know, which of these teams, Seton Hall, St. John's, Syracuse, can win a few games, get some momentum, and and maybe solidify a berth, but – Honestly, I think you guys love this guy. Is Cade? I want to see him. You know, this is kind of like the appetizer for what we're going to see. Hopefully, next week and for a couple weeks, is red hot. They're playing as well as anyone in the country. Um, let's see how he can do now again in a great conference and with games that he's going to have to, you know, be the star. So I want. I can't wait to see how he performs. I think getting the Big 12 tournament against these teams um, before the actual tournament is going to help him a lot, kind of get used to it, and then take off from there. So I can't wait to see Cade this week and uh, see how much that momentum can carry them. Governor, what do you got? I don't know what I have. I mean, again, I think you guys took the two main things. You know, to me, it's I have written down, you know, again, Duke, Kentucky, uh, Michigan State, what could they do here? Um, obviously, the bubble teams is the big thing. Uh, you know, I guess for me, it might be the Big Ten tournament still. You know, looking at it from several different um, ways. Obviously, Michigan and Illinois pretty much have a, a, a one seed locked up. Um, you know, how does I, uh, is Ohio State going to get their mojo back in this? Is Joe Wieskamp going to play? And how healthy is he going to be? Michigan State, we talked about. Um, Indiana and Mi- Minnesota have coaches that are clearly fighting for their jobs. And I think Richard Pitino is pretty much done. But I think watching Indiana in this one is going to be uh, very interesting because if they lay an egg, could Archie Miller and, you know, $10 million, uh, you know, buy what he's owed, you know, could Scott Dolson make a move there? Is he looking at this? This Big Ten tournament is kind of, all right, do I keep Archie for another year or do I make a move on him? Again, I think Richard Pitino is already gone. But I I think there's a lot. There's a lot in the Big Ten. The best games are going to come in the Big Ten and the Big 12 because those have been the best leagues all year. But the most intriguing storylines are going to come to me from like the ACC, the SEC. Um, I think Memphis still could be interesting. The AAC, like is Houston a lock to win the AAC? Probably not. Like, can, can somebody steal a bid there? Are are they a lock to play in the AC, AAC tournament? Yes. From what it's, I'm told, it's, yes. it's definitely happening. All right. From they, what they, I'm told, for people, for people that, that weren't aware that there was there was some scuttle for a while that they might not play in the tournament because they're worried about the uh, the the no mask mandate that is going on in that state right now. And the last thing that you want is to have a bunch of players in that state and someone test positive and have it blow up your. Uh, your march. All right, so let's go with the breakout star um, during this week. Goodman, I'm going to put you on the spot with this one first since uh, you very clearly did not give this any thought whatsoever on my homework you assignment that I assigned f- five minutes before. You, the stream. you didn't give me any. Hey, what do you want from me, man? I come up with ideas. I got to let them flow, you know? Trying to break the Eastern Michigan firing. I mean, come on. We got things going on here. Um, the breakout star? I don't freaking know. Who's the breakout star? I, I don't know. 
No. So you want to know who I, I'll, I'll go first on that one. Sure. What you guys think about it. I, I'm going to go with Moses Moody. We talked about it the other day, um, but he's a guy on a top 15 team um, on a team that finished second in the SEC that is going to be a lottery pick that is averaging 17 points a game. Feels like no one's really talking about him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he had 28 in his last two games. Um, I definitely think he's the kind of guy that could go out and average like 23 per game. And Arkansas can go out and win the SEC tournament, and everyone's going to be like, oh, okay, now I see why Moses Moody's getting all this hype. So I, I'm going with him. The other guy that I would go with is probably James Booknight, but uh, that feels very much like a, a – Not really a breakout. So. Yeah, I mean yeah, – He's like, he already broke he out. He already broke. Yeah, he broke. Yeah, he's broken. Right. Uh, yeah, I got, I got, yeah, I got two, actually. I think one of the guys in the chat kind of stole my thunder with Moses Wright. I mean, I just watched that guy kind of dominate – uh the last couple of games and that guy could certainly put up some numbers i think they're a team that you know again when the bulls brackets come out that team's scary to me like they just yeah. something they're not, not like the smoothest team to watch at all as we know right. but at the same time they're gonna muck it up and i think they could play and that guy's been great and i think rob one of the things you hit on i think over the weekend when you were talking about it but these guys from purdue pick any one of those guys i think they're they're one of these teams that and I was going to talk about this too. When they get into the tournament, they literally have nothing to lose. These guys are all theoretically going to come back next year. Um, they have nothing to lose. Sometimes when you uh, just throw these young kids into a tournament, let them lose, see what could happen. They're going to be theoretically playing the NCAA tournament in their backyard. So that should help them a little bit too. Um, but I, any of these guys on Purdue, I think they are a sleeper team to win the tournament, the Big Ten tournament. So any of those guys could step up. They've been playing a hell of a great ball over the last couple of weeks. They got a great coach. So I would take those guys and Moses Wright. I think those I'm excited to watch those guys play. Um, and again, you know, some of the guys in the, the Pac-10, who's going to step up in the Pac-10, you know? Um, so that'll be interesting to watch too. I'm going with uh, with Champagne and Hauser. Champagne and Hauser, because I get four of them total. So um, that's why I'm, <laughs> I'm just increasing my odds. That's yeah. all I'm doing. I'm just Smart. playing the game, I'm increasing my Smart. odds. So Smart. I got two um, Champagne's. And I got two Housers, and uh, that means I got more more guys than you. I got more chances. All right, last thing, bold prediction for this week, Adam. Why don't you lead this one off? Oklahoma State wins the Big Twelve tournament um, again. I I think Baylor is one of these teams that could get picked off just because of the fact that they've done so much. Um, they're coming back. Do they want to kind of give it their all with you know the tournament? They're just coming back from the pause. Uh, I don't trust Kansas. And then you look around the league. Who's playing better than Oklahoma State right now? So. Um, I'll take that as one, and then I think Purdue winning the Big Ten. I'll double up, and I'll say both of those guys. I think those are two teams playing well right now. Um, by the way, Boynton's done an excellent job at Oklahoma yeah. State, and they were kind of talking about it, um, I think, on the telecast the other day, but what that guy's done to kind of get this team to buy in around Kate, because obviously sometimes it's hard when you have a star, and he obviously is a big reason why, um, where he's such a member of this team, and he's so close with that team. But the fact that he's kind of brought this all together and they're peaking right now, uh, so I'll go with Oklahoma State and Purdue to win their conference tournaments. I'm going to go bid Steelers in the Big East and the Pac-12. Bid Steelers in both. Um, again, you know, Big East right now looks like a mess. It, it really does. And I know we're, 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 we're all over UConn and they're playing well, but I could see somebody, a Seton Hall, a St. John's, a Providence, right. making a run and, and winning that thing. And, the Pac-12 stinks. I mean, it's been bad. It's been mediocre all year. I'm hoping my Arizona State Sun Devils uh, make a run. They finally get it together, Rob Doster. They nope. finally do it. The nope. team I picked 15. Hold on. Give me one second. Ball. I'll be right back. I got something for you. Hold on. All right. Get the all right. Arizona State T-shirt. All right. So, Jeff, I love your call on uh, on St. John's. My bold prediction was going to be um, St. John's winning the Big East tournament. They're playing in Madison yeah, Square yeah. Garden, which is a home arena. They get yep. Seton Hall in the first round. There, there you go, is. Sun Devils, baby. Um, they get Ari uh, Arizona State. They get Seton Hall in the first round. They just yep. erase an 18-point deficit and beat uh, Seton Hall by 10 the last game of the regular season. Um, their their semifinal matchup then would be against the Villanova team that doesn't have uh, Colin Gillespie right. and that might not have Justin Moore. And with the way that St. John's wants to press, how about this? I think Villanova might have to start Chris Archie Diacono at the point. He played 25 minutes against uh, Providence the other day. This is his second year in the program. Can you guess how many total minutes he played in the uh, in, in every game across his entire career before Saturday? 25 minutes. 
He played 35 minutes his entire career, and he played 25 minutes on Saturday. That's and he might have to start at the point in the semifinals of the Big East tournament in Madison Square Garden against the St. John's team with uh, with Posh Alexander, who's going to be harassing him. And you get to the final of the Big East, you know, it's, it's got to win one game. So yep. my, what do you guys, my, my prediction is St. John's winning the Big East tournament. What do you guys think about, you know, obviously you guys talked about it yesterday morning with Zagorowski coming out and defending McDermott and obviously standing behind him. But to me, what they showed, you know, blasting Butler on, what was it, Saturday, then coming in here, you know, it's them and UConn to me in terms of the two favorites, obviously. St. John's, I certainly think, can win it. Um, right. What do you think about Creighton, not only this week, but even going forward? I think him coming out, um, you know, and he's, again, most likely in most of the games they're going to play, Zagorowski is the best player on the floor. I think that this is a team that if they can get hot now, too, they could obviously make a run because of him, his leadership, and then them maybe all buying in from this. I think the, the problem is I think that they're still – like he came out and said something, but I don't think that that locker room is completely – yeah. Unified. And if Greg McDermott is back this weekend, um, I think that there is, uh, what's what's the best way to that? I, I think that that can create some awkward situations if he comes back. Sure. I think that's the best way to phrase it. Yeah, that's true. So, um, but I, I mean, I like the theory, like the, but the, yeah, I think there's a reason why Zagorowski came out and said what he said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's, a, there's, there's you know, Creighton, they look good on that, on that game, but Butler, Butler's bad right now. Yeah, it. that's true. They're bad. I mean, the three of us, I think, could get a couple dudes out there, and and we might be able to hang with Butler right now. Well, maybe maybe me and Adam, but Jeff, I've seen you play, man. You'll you would you would tear your meniscus in the first two minutes of that game, trying I to feel go good right now. I trying feel to go good. Over, tell everyone, Adam, Adam. Do you know he spent this entire season telling everyone that he can still go up and touch the rim? I mean, I could touch my kids. That's about it. So I could. I gotta get. I gotta get back in shape. I'm gonna. I'm gonna work on it now that the weather. Yeah, we'll, we'll weather's we'll breaking. See. We'll, we'll see. Fifty degrees here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start going for runs. Do see lots of walks can... outside of Indianapolis. That'll be. That'll be nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be running. I mean, hey, I got a. I got a. We got a Peloton, so I could try to uh, lose my COVID nineteen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Adam, thanks for jumping on the stream. Adam, thanks, man. We my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Be well. You too.